Now that we have found the better algorithm, maybe we can try to improve the performance of the algorithm by using one of our optimization techniques. RapidMiner provides various optimization techniques like optimization of parameters, allows you to do automatic feature selection, feature generation, and feature weighing. For the first part, uh, let's say we want to do feature selection. We are going to open up existing process again here. What I have here, like we did before, was obviously I'm getting the 2007 data, the 2008 data, doing the usual data prep, and then I'm filtering it into the training set based on the condition 2007 year and 2008 is my test data set. I'm also doing the weight by information gain to help the optimize feature selection. We are providing necessary parameters here. The optimized selection evolutionary operator is a meta operator. Inside of the operator, I am going to build a gradient boosted tree. Uh, I know our bagging and deep learning seem better, but uh, for the purpose of this demonstration, we're just going to stay with JBT for now. I'm building the model, testing it against the 2008 data set, capturing the performance, and I'm deciding how I want to optimize the model based on accuracy or the first uh, selection or recall or whatever, so I can decide how what is my main goal for optimization. And then I have a short sub-process here that is basically storing all these intermediate models and the result set. When I can then run the workflow here, what will happen is RapidMan is going to try various combinations of features and save them, save all the models and their performance and eventually just deliver me the best model and the performance and the feature set to work with. So let's go ahead and run it. Eventually, when the workflow finishes, you'll notice we have a log information here. This is the captured data while the iterations are running. RapidMiner actually built around 259 different models. Uh, we are doing the GBT here, and you'll notice for each of the iterations, uh, we kept the depth at 20, but not try. We'll try different uh, depth values in a bit here. And these are the model results. So if I just sort it by the accuracy, basically I can get up to 65 person accuracy with a precision of 48.7. I've also saved the same log here in the repository. So let's go ahead and open it up. I can use this for later analysis if needed or later comparisons. But if I go to the charts view and let's say we plot uh, the count on the x-axis, we definitely see a pattern where the model was improving in the accuracy, which is the y-axis uh, after uh, several iterations. And obviously it kind of plateaued after a bit here. If I maybe try a different value, let's say uh, AUC. The AUC kind of stayed almost constant through the whole thing, uh, but maybe look at the precision perspective. But yes, our precision also improved along with the accuracy. So as you notice, I can go back and analyze this data and maybe next time when I run another feature optimization cycle, I can compare this with the old data set to see if it helped or not. Similar to the feature optimization process, we have built a process here for parameter optimization. Uh, I'm doing the usual, getting the data, splitting into training and testing, and then I'm passing in the training part into a gradient boosted tree, and the testing, that is our 2008 data to the apply model step. We're going to apply the model and capture performance, and I can select what performance vectors I want to capture. I can also decide what criteria I'm looking to optimize so thereby the iteration would compare that particular criterion and deliver the one that is best. This somehow is keeping step to log and capture the models that are built along the process. One of the beauties of this approach is uh, you could also build a cross-validation optimization step here. So instead of a separate training and test data set, I could simply put in the data in the validation operator, inside will build the model, and then the average port here, that is your performance vector, can be passed along to the performance vector here and thereby we can compare a cross-validated model against different iterations of values. But so far we have not decided which parameters we are trying to optimize. That is done by settings on the optimized parameters options here. If I click on the settings here, you'll notice it automatically discovers all the various operators that are inside. So I can select my gradient boosted trees. It will list out all the possible parameters here. I can then highlight one of the parameters, so move it to the right. So for example, for the gradient boosted trees, number of trees, I'm trying to optimize between 30 and 150 in six steps. So these are the unique values of number of trees that will be tried. And the maximal depth of 10 to 20 at five steps on a logarithmic scale. 
uh, if I need to specify some hard coded values I could also go ahead and do that I could simply start adding values that I need to test on and then the number of combination obviously changes based on the hard coded values you have but for now we'll just go with the initial combination and we'll go ahead and run the workflow now what I have here is the result of the optimized gradient booster trees we see all the various trees and we can click through and see each of them uh, in the graphical format or in the textual format here but the key interesting thing here is the parameter set so it turns out I can get an accuracy of about 68 with a value of number of trees equals to 90 and maximum depth equals to 15 uh, we also have the detailed performance vector that we can learn from while I'm building this model I've also kept a track of all the iterations so we have for each iteration so the count is the iteration the accuracy of the models the precision and the depth and the number of trees parameter so between this I have a history of records of what happened during that whole optimization cycle as you notice I did the optimization for feature selection and optimization for parameter tuning separately but I could also combine them into one workflow to try various combination of features and parameters in the same workflow here at the end of the day I could start storing this models by simply using the store operator and then provide a location on where to store it once a model has been stored we can keep building on the existing workflow so for example I have this model building process here that delivers me the best optimized model and then I can let's say compare that with one of my existing bagging models with the model management operator and by doing so I am now able to compare a model let's say that was used in production systems and then compare and save the one that is the best among the two models so it will basically be doing a challenger champion testing here using the optimized process comparing that with the existing bagging model in production which was saved here and the one that is the best one will be automatically stored for later purposes so you could have a process that automatically tunes your models compare them against your production models and then updates them